Good afternoon, everybody. I think it is good to start. Unfortunately, I have only 10 minutes, and I think this is a very fantastic topic to talk about it hours and hours. Typically, we will go through the main challenges and the common issues that we have in the construction and in real estate, the current project management process, the solution is the digital engineering strategy, the value of, of information during the life cycle stages of the project, the design equality reflection on project life cycle and how to mature in BIM strategy, and the journey uh, of BIM implementation through the three Ps uh, approach, then an implementation action and the CDE concept that uh, will be followed with why we need BIM in real estate projects, and lastly, we will have a showcase. First, what are the main challenges that we are facing right now in the, uh, in the constru construction industry in general and in real estate? Tracking the changes of the project during the design and construction, which is done by multi-contractors, uh, uh, consultants, many entities are involved together. Building scenarios for the impact of design changes at the early stage of the project. The need of integration between different project life cycles, speci specifically when we are talking about the capex from one side and the uh, opex from the other side, and how to build the uh, capabilities and the culture change among our teams. The common issues that we are facing here, I'm just listing some of them, not all of them actually. The lack of accurate, uh, reliable project information, the duplication in the documentation and uh, information of the projects, the difficulty to record the changes during the project because our projects usually taking a huge amount of time, years. Difficulty to monitor the asset performance after handing over during the operation and maintenance. And the lack of single source of truth, which is very important and uh, key for the success of uh, our uh, BIM implementation, the lack of coordination between CAPEX and OPEX, and this is common, I believe, difficult to control the real estate project's time, budget, and, co and uh, cost. Basically, the major and important problem that we are facing is the silos. As each entity, each department, each team is working separately or in a silo aside from the others. So there is no communication. As we can see, for example, the designer is finishing his job without communication with the contractor, without communication with the handing over team, operation maintenance, until the disposal at the end of the life cycle uh, stages. So what is the solution? The solution is to have the digital engineering strategy, which means build before you build. Build your project virtually in your computer by using the software that you are using before building on site the physical items, which we call it a digital twin. So if we do so, we will get the benefits of sensing our projects and see how it is uh, going to be before being built on site which means that all the clashes, all the issues, all the scenarios can be checked virtually in, a, a computer, in, 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 a, in your laptop before going to site. Right now, as you, can, uh, uh, as you all sense uh, that the currency of the last decade, and we are expecting uh, the next decade also, the currency is the uh, 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 digital era. So, Previously, we were talking about document sharing. Now we are talking about the data sharing. As much as you share data, as much as you get more information about your assets and your uh, projects. Quickly, I will go through the life cycle stages, starting from the design, construction, operation, and maintenance, to see together these uh, graphs, which is showing uh, the curves. Basically, in the design and construction stage, we are spending 15 to 20% of the life cycle duration of any project, and the remaining 80 to 85% is related to operation and maintenance. So whatever is done at the beginning stage here is very important and reflecting a lot in the later stages there. So if you are preparing yourself well and invest a little bit, as you can see in this color, uh, in this red, uh, sorry, in this uh, blue uh, curve, you are you need to invest some time, some effort, some money extra at the beginning in order to achieve the uh, 
the, 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 the benefits from building your designs on a virtual uh, before going to build it on, uh, the, uh, on, on the realistic. So we can see how the BIM, which is known here, the, the blue colored curve, giving us the benefits through the life cycle of getting less time and less information uh, uh, lose during the life cycle of the, the project. Uh, this is another graph that I need to just give an indication about it, which is uh, giving us the reflection of the design. And what you are doing during the design has 70% on, uh, on the cost at the later stages. How to build the BIM, how to be mature in a BIM strategy, as we, as we can see in this uh, uh, infographic, I liked it because it is showing us how we can move from this life, which is fully with drawings and miscommunication between people and too much use of uh, papers, until we reach to the level that we have open shared information throughout the life cycle, which includes the performance and the operational data. Going through the level two, which is very important, and most of the companies right now are in that stage, in level two, where basically you need two major things. The BEM execution plan, which is showing each one what to do, and the uh, collaboration process in the common data environment, which we'll be uh, talking about in a, uh, in a bit. So the journey of BIM can be implemented by depending on three Ps. Three Ps approach, which are the people, the processes, and the platform, and of course, with the governance of clear and specific accurate policies and standards. Here we are talking about the roles and responsibilities, the training and education for your team. No need to bring new B, uh, BIM people. You can just train your team and segregate the responsibilities between them, deliver the uh, training and education for them. For the processes, there is configuration management, the information exchange between different life cycle to be managed, the pre-qualification for the contractors, the consultants, uh, and everybody included in the process, and of course, the contract uh, rearrangement or the contract modification, because most of the companies have a template for their uh, contracts. You need to update it or to modify it to include the BIM to avoid any variation orders in the later stages. And there is an interesting document which is very important, the EIR, the Employer Information Requirements. You need as an employer or as a client to prepare this document to show your supply chain what exactly you are looking for. And for the platforms, you need to select the software, the capable software that can support your project or your industry or your discipline. And also the uh, common data environment, which is the CDE, that where, where the, uh, which is the environment where the information, all the information will be centralized and everybody can refer back to it. So everybody is referring to the same information from one hand and from the other hand, the versioning and the changes, the modifications in the documentation related to the project can be found in one place. So this is the single source of truth that, that, uh, uh, that is uh, needed for BIM. And the implementation actions, this is quick let's say, uh, to-do list for BIM implementation, which is setting the BIM standards policies and the EIR, contract, uh, contractual adaptation to BIM, the digital plan of work and the data exchange protocols, the supply chain assessment, the KPIs, the audit, the way that you are going to evaluate and assess how your supply chain are doing their job, select and deploy platforms and softwares that we just mentioned, the awareness, the technical training, and uh, for, for all your stakeholders, not only for your team, because whoever is working with you should be aligned with the level that you have. Seek the compliance with international standards and protocols where there is, uh, for example, the latest is ISO 60, uh, 19650, which is uh, published and known for uh, in the uh, last year and can be uh, used as a reference for the implementation itself. This is the CDE. I will not take a lot of time for this, but it is basically focusing on making the proper connection between the CAPEX and OPEX. So there is seamless integration between the information delivered from construction, uh, from a construction project after the design and construction to the operation and vice versa. The information can be uh, come and go between them. 
Why we need BIM in real estate? Because we need to optimize the communication and collaboration between different entities involved in the process. Real-time coordination to, uh, to, 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 to follow up the uh, construction and fabrication, reduce the cost of uh, variation order, orders dramatically, and you all know about this, how much it costs. The support for uh, project construction sequence and the QHSE, federated 3D model to support the AR, the VR, uh, traceable document management, detection, and solving for the clashes. Actually, uh, additionally, migrating between the data between CAPEX and OPEX, uh, for example, the connection between the CDE and the computerized man uh, maintenance management system uh, that we are using in the OPEX phase. Reliable data for integration with the spatial solutions such as uh, the uh, GIS. Precise models to support the coordination with legacy assets because many of the projects are starting then after some years we are adding to that. So in summary, it provides scenarios in a very flexible way for optimizing the decision making and providing reliable and well-structured data for OPEX phase. One of the case studies showed, that I personally worked for, showed 18% return of investment for the BIM implementation. This 18% came from 30% reduction in data exchange efforts, uh, 95 clash-free multidisciplinary models, 30% reduction in decision-making time, 30% less shop drawing submission time, 20% reduction in risk and the mitigation uh, process, 25% improvement in the efficiency and productivity, 40% less time of generating materials takeoff, uh, clear track for the construction sequence and improve the project time schedule by 15%. So the beauty of BAM is it is a common platform that is applicable to all industries, all projects, with a concept of constructive digital physical collaboration. Thank you. I wish that I covered on time. Any question?